Hey guys, what is going on? I'm Tuboo Bubbles, and today I have a tutorial. I know it's been a long time, but I am back, and that's all that really matters. So, this tutorial is going to be all about keyframing, and before you click away, if you're a non-gamer and you're like, well, I need this for something else, this applies to everything. So, just because I have gaming footage doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to you, and if you have gaming footage, it does apply to you. So, it applies to everybody. And yeah, that's my little disclaimer at the start of the video. Okay, anyway, back on topic. Right here, we have some media in the background, which is a video I did a little bit ago. It was a pretty cool tomahawk reflex kill that I had. And here we have some text. So say you're somebody who wants to make the text start out big and end up small. Well, how do you do that? Smoothly. Keep in mind, smoothly. That's the operative word for this tutorial. Keyframing is all about changing the parameters of something smoothly. Okay, <clears throat> so back to that person that wants to make their text start out big and end up small. Well, what you're gonna what you're gonna want to do is highlight or select your text. Once you have done this critical step, you will move on to the inspector tab of the text. You will go all the way over to video. Now that you have selected the video tab, you can see the scale option. When you go over anything, you will notice this little thing right here. This is the keyframe, and you will see add a keyframe. Now, a keyframe is essentially a marker that will cue some sort of change. And you can have more than one. You can have as many as you want. And you need at least two to actually do something. So with that in mind, we will start making this change to make the text start out big and end up small. So we have our scale option here. You can see it's set to 258%, so the text is relatively large, actually. Let's make it bigger. All right, 318. So we're starting at 318%. Now, one thing to keep in mind right away is that wherever your playhead is, that's where the keyframe will go when you select it. So if I hit add a, uh, add a keyframe, you will notice that the keyframe, if you go over here, when you select it, is right here. And that's another quick thing I want to say, that uh, if you hit the arrows, you can navigate quickly through keyframes. And also, if you click the keyframe when you're on it, it will delete it. So once we get these navigational things out of the way, we can move right in. All right, so moving on to the actual meat of the tutorial. <coughs> So you have your playhead selected at the beginning, right? You click a keyframe. Now, if you go to change something like this, it will actually create a keyframe for you because like I said, you can't do anything without um, more than one keyframe. So they have that built in because they know people will probably do that. So what you can do is you can just either add a keyframe or just go to the end and change it but you need keyframes to be able to do this. So <clears throat> just for the sake of this, I'm adding a keyframe right here. Now what you wanna do is slide this little option all the way over to zero, and as you will see, the text will start up big and end up small. So you can do the reverse of this. There's You can change the color of the text and keyframe that way. You could change the position, like we could do this right now. Could add a keyframe for the position. Start it at 100 and 200. Now we go here. Even though this will look stupid, just stay with me here. Add the keyframe. Go to zero and zero. All right, now our text will look really stupid. <laughs> And look at that. That is one dazzling effect that will have your audiences raving. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. Um, as I said before, there are these little buttons pretty much everywhere. So whenever you want to change something, if you have an idea like, oh, how could I do this smoothly, just think back to keyframes. And I wanted to do this tutorial before I did any other tutorials that I had in mind because this tutorial will actually help you with the other ones. So I have another tutorial coming out pretty soon that's going to be basically 
Ah, uh, I can't spoil it. I can't spoil it. So, uh, <laughs> so if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you want to like, like. If you want to dislike, dislike. But most of all, if you want to comment, comment, because I love comments. So, yeah, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And uh, stick around for that next tutorial. It's going to be more gaming geared, but it still applies to everything. So uh, let me know with some feedback in the comments how I did, and I'll see you later. Okay, on the left we have a Black Ops 2 app review that I do with my buddy Brass Monkey's app. It's pretty sweet, so uh, check that out. And also there is a Final Cut Pro X audio sync tutorial. If you want to know how to do that, just click the link. Either way, see you later.